So as promised, I'm being joined here in the Worship Stream TV studio by Gary Batan. Gary, thank you for hosting the first two days. You're welcome. It was fun. It was. It was a good time. We had a lot of great guests. Uh, but really what we're happiest about is the engagement from the audience. So Gary, I wanted to make sure that you and I take the opportunity to answer any questions that came in over the course of the week. And I want to start with one that I prepared for. Okay. Because it's the most popular question anytime we do a show like this. What is the best camera for this price? Insert of course. whatever the price is. Uh, of course. You know, and it's, I want to start by saying there is no one size fits all okay. answer. We really need to know what you're looking for, what gear you have, which is why you can always call us to get that kind of information where we'll talk to you and we'll help you. Like I said, during my show on the camera show, go over what fits in the room, what doesn't, what you're trying to do, what's your connectivity, what's your lighting situation like that. But I know you put this together some great charts. And yeah. what I want to stress here is for under $2,000, you've got a lot of choices. Whereas a couple of years ago, you had almost none. Absolutely. And I think this is where we really see the natural conversations going. The In what we would call the affordable, but still broadcast quality, where you're, you're going to get the low light capability. Yep. You're going to be able to stream to your audience that under $2,000 price point yep. is the place to start. And what I love about it too is the entry for that is gotten lower. That's really, you're, you're at under $1,000 now yep. to start when we talk about some of these cameras. And then the next level gets you into that $2,000 to $5,000 range. Yeah. This is where you start getting into some of that POE management capability, uh, some of the higher uh, frame rates, a lot more 4K, 4K cameras, yeah. longer distance throws. Yeah. And you know, you're also, as you get up a little bit higher, you're also getting into a little bit better, not just optics, but mechanics. You're actually, the, the motion starts to become smoother of, of the PTZ cameras. It, absolutely. And then I've heard you refer to it on the show yesterday as the flagship cameras. And this is really where you're starting to get to that $5,000 in up. And I, I want to give credit to that to the video production team we have here. They came, kind of came up with that, and I just rolled with it. But I like the way we talk about that because I think you don't – it's saying you just need one of them. Right. You don't, you know, I'd love for everyone to be able to say I want five of these, but if you put one in, it's going to lift your production up a lot. And those cameras really are, you know, it's not for the little church. If you're a little moderate sized church, you don't have to go there. But if you're a really big church and you're really looking to take your production, you know, like I say, you know, it's nine to ten, take it to eleven. Right. These are the cameras to do it with, especially you know that UE one fifty and one sixty that has on. Hey, absolutely, and then one thing I'll add to that too is these are usually the cameras that play best in the hybrid environments that we yeah. talked about today. If you're connecting a cinema camera, a mirrorless camera, now you want the best of the best PTZ cameras, even if it's just to maintain that optical image quality across your multi-camera environment. Yeah, you'll also notice a lot of these have one-inch sensors, so you're going to just do so much better in low light. A absolutely. So now I want, to make, I want to make sure that we go to the team and answer some of the other questions that have come in. Uh, so let's reach out to James and Adam. Do we have any questions from the audience? Hi, Jim. Yes, we have gotten a couple questions throughout the event. The first one being, where can I learn more about NDI? Well, first of all, NDI is a phenomenal technology that's going to allow you to send video over your standard uh, internet, your network connections, gigabyte internet. We, we do a show called NDI November where we feature, like this was three days. We're talking a full month where we have almost – Three days a week, a case study, an interview, a show about the technology. And we've been doing that for four years. So if you go to YouTube and you look for NDI November, that's a great place to go. But also the Video Guys blog has a lot of good NDI stuff. And NDI yep. themselves has become like an independent company. NDI was created by Dr. Cross at New Tech. It was part of New Tech. New Tech got bought by BizRT. And now the NDI brand stands alone at BizRT. They've got tremendous information up there on the NDI website. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, the NDI website, like you mentioned, now owned by BizRT, they're redoing all of their education and certification. So if you go to NDI TV and you go to the resources section, you'll actually see coming soon. I'm being told that that's going to be very soon. And there's going to be a lot of great resources available there. And you mentioned NDI November, the shameless plug. You can go directly to NDINovember.com and see all the videos from this past year. But what I love about the technology is even the videos we did four years ago still stand. Still stand and have pertinent information. Absolutely. And this past November, we were actually joined by Jeremy from BizRT yep. in a show specifically dedicated to Hasa Yeah. So lots of great stuff there to talk about. Yeah. Excellent question. 
Uh, next question is, can you talk a little bit about OBS and or vMix? I think a lot of people think we don't like those products, which could not be further from the truth. But the truth is, is OBS is something you can download directly from their website for free or for a slight premium. And vMix is sold directly from their website, and it's a very affordable program. We love them both. They're excellent. All of our PTZ cameras work great with them. Yep. They both support NDI beautifully. We are fans of them. If In fact, we're selling a JVC uh, dedicated box that is a vMix appliance yep. from JVC that's under $5,000. And I know, but the thing I really love about OBS and vMix is you can put it on any computer. Yeah. But as I said in my show, you can easily create a show that overruns the CPU and GPU of that computer. So you've got to be aware that while they're both great products, they're, intent they're compute intensive. Yes, absolutely. And I think what I would say too is OBS is really the ultimate do-it-yourself solution. You're really kind of flying in the Wild West and you need to become an expert of what you're building. One of the things I love that vMix has done is they've built these standards where the JVC system you spoke about is built to the vMix Ruby standard which is going to give you a multi-camera live production with NDI capability into a turnkey JVC box that's made to have it all work together. And then if we're going to talk about those two products, we also have to talk about Wired. Yes, software. It's still the only software application that runs on both Windows and Mac. Yeah. So especially if you're working with younger volunteers and a younger audience, the second that kid rolls in with his MacBook, He's going to want to talk to you about wire chest. Yeah, one of the things I'm going to say for House of Worship that makes vMix such a good choice is there's trial versions, there's inexpensive versions, and you can scale with it as you go. So you can start very basic with a two-camera shoot streaming to one place. Yep. And vMix can grow with you, and when you're ready to get a little more complicated, there's other versions of vMix that you can upgrade to. So vMix is a great product. I love it. Our encoders work great with it. Our PTZ cameras work great with it. And you can even inter you can integrate vMix with TriCasters, with OBS, through NDI, because NDI is the secret sauce, secret glue that ties everything in your video production together. That's a great point. And one of the things we talked about today was the hybrid production environment. Yep. It really is becoming more and more true. As these products start working better, they also start working better together, allowing you to put different tools into a single installation. Yeah. But I want everyone to understand, we are big fans of vMix and OBS. Try it, you'll love it, and you might want to grow to a TriCaster at some point, or you might just get beefy enough computers that vMix keeps, or OBS keeps doing the job for you. The choice is yours. Absolutely. All right, it looks like we had two questions come in today's show. The first one being, I would like to learn more about AI CV for color matching. Uh, yes, so we talked a lot about the artificial intelligence, the okay. AI technology, yeah. and color matching. Yeah. I know from talking to these guys while we are rolling the clip with Paul Richards that there is some AI color matching capability built into the TriCaster today. Yes. And it's one of the things I expect to see a lot more of with the VizRT acquisition, where you're starting to see some of their broadcast technology make its way into the live production space as well. Yeah. And, you know, all the auto tracking you see is really AI based technology at its core that's going on there. And I think you're going to see a lot of AI uh, color matching going on. And yeah. even what I'm going to say is color shading or grading where I'll want to look like I'm indoors or outdoors or it's evening or it's morning to intentionally shade the video for warmth of features and feel like that. And I, I'm fully hoping, and I've said this to my PTZ people, I'm hoping we get a dropper like Photoshop right. where I can pick the one camera that's right and just do a dropper and get all the skin tones right. Because one of the things is so, when we first set up this studio and we tried to put three different PTZ cameras, in, well, two different PTZ cameras and a standalone Panasonic camera. Matching color was so difficult. It's gotten so much easier, but that's for two or three cameras. When you're going to try to match five, six, eight cameras or handheld with moving cameras with natural light with, you know, churches have stained glass windows with all right. kinds of multicolored light coming through. So yeah. I definitely think the AI is going to be very cool for it. And I would say that any PTZ camera you get today will only get that infused into it over time because it's not really something that requires, you know, a massive firmware. You might have to do it on a laptop at first before they put it in. But remember, two years ago, all our auto tracking was by running a separate computer to do it. And now I would say 75% of the PTZ cameras we sell have auto tracking built into the camera themselves now. 
Absolutely. And I think if you watched the show when James from Canon joined us, he talked about how their controllers can control the shading and color correction yeah. of some of the cameras. And I know Red is doing that with their cameras at the cinema level yeah. as well. So the fact, what I'm seeing in the AI world is the technology has to first exist. And, and, and it has to exist from the point of view yep. of having someone press a button. And then sooner or later, we're training the machine to say, this is when that button gets pressed. So yeah. we're and, getting close. And as vision technology improves, that all to get better, faster, easier. That's a good question. Uh, it looks like the last question that came in was from Steve, and he's asking, is the HDMI out a multi-view? And I want to specify, I believe he's talking about the SuperJoy from PTZ Optics, and I think the answer is no. It would actually be uh, just the camera that you are controlling you will get the uh, video preview of. Right. You, you get, you get a, I believe you can get a semi-multi-view on the screen that's on the SuperJoy, right? Can, can, can I answer this another way? Yeah. My answer would be, I don't know if it is definitely the SuperJoy that this customer is referring to, but there are products available with multi-view in it. So if that is a feature that Steve needs in his workflow, the question isn't, can this product do it? The answer is, let us help you find the product that does. I know KillerView right. makes a multi-view product. Yep. Where they're not only going to combine a multi-view uh, server, right. but also software that all plays in this NDI world to give you that capability. Yeah, I was going to say BirdDog with their cloud has multi-view. Multi-view could be software. You can get a multi-viewer through NDI yep. as a downloader to do. So if you're going to be looking for multi-view and you need to have it where the person controlling the SuperJoy is, think NDI to begin with because there's so many NDI solutions to get multi-view at so many different levels. So multi-view was something that used to be a very expensive tricky thing with multiple routers and cables and <laughs> yep. screens. But now the truth of the matter is, is any laptop can become a multi-viewer. Right. And also any a laptop that have its HDMI out be on a big 90-inch TV so that the multi-view isn't much just limited to be on the camera. And you can even take the multi-viewer out through something like a play to have multi-view in a room where anyone needs to be. So multi-view, very easy to solve for you. Give us a call and we will give you multiple options that range from software to hardware the NDI to a combination of those. But multi-view, not the expensive challenge it used to be. No, and I'll say, too, a lot of it, too, comes from the nature of the question. Is it a multi-view in order to control and monitor nine cameras at the same time? Control room. Or right. are you looking for a multi-view maybe in an overflow room where your audience can watch what's happening in different centers throughout your campus? Yeah. And so it, one's a digital signage application, another's a production application. The beauty is now with AV over IP, you could kind of throw it all into the into the network and do all because of it. he said SuperJoy. I'm thinking that he's got a room on the side where probably the someone will be controlling just the cameras, right? And you know, with the SuperJoy, how do I get a multi view so they can see everything? So I would say NDI is the way to do that. The nice part about NDI is you can even do some comms communication over NDI also with that guy. So a great question. Do we have any other questions that came in? That's, that looks like everything that's come in today and in the past. All right, awesome. so, so I had a question for you guys as the production team who produced this whole show. And that is, what do you think was the most important thing that we talked about over the three days that really ties in for a house of worship more than anything else? I, I, I think the thing that I took away from this the most, honestly, was the uh, doing the Jim's going over the... Uh, hybrid applications that you can do, especially talking about Canon cameras being able to match camcorders to their PTZ cameras and really kind of taking your productions to the next level uh, in, in adding multiple kinds of cameras while keeping all of that same uh, imagery together. I think that was a good point too. And the other point that I think is important is that I think House of Worships need to look at NDI. Yeah. You know, NDI gives you so much flexibility and just all the cameras we talked about with Canon can all support NDI also. So with an encoder, of course, comes to worse. But I, I really think that NDI, if you're a house of worship, it's a way that you can run your wiring less expensively. Through PoE, I can fire up and have those PTZ cameras working. It allows me to scale almost to infinity. And also, it really works with the infrastructure that the church has. I know a lot of churches that might not have good Wi-Fi and internet connectivity. 
but they are pretty much wired for a standard network, you know, Cam 5 or better cameras, better cabling. And that's all you really need to have NDI come to life. And also, if you needed to, you could run NDI, you know, in the building rather inexpensively because it's not powered, it's not expensive. But also what I think is important about NDI is what I always say is, is if you're going to go NDI, it starts by getting the right switch. That was going to be my question <laughs> for you, Gary. So my, you, you, you talk a lot about the NDI network. And I know from watching the other shows you've hosted, there is one number one tech support solution that you point out when we talk about NDI. What is that? Yeah, Netgear has AV over IP optimized switches. When, when, when Dr. Cross first introduced NDI, I said to him, I said, the number one thing we need is an NDI dedicated switch. They, he, they didn't do it. He thought he had to be agnostic to everyone. But the folks at Netgear really got together. What makes these switches, the M4250 switches, so incredible is their AV over IP optimized. They're easy to set up, rock solid stability, easy to expand and change, and they scale. Yep. So you can scale, you can start small and scale bigger, you can add another switch, you get a bigger switch. So Netgear AV switches, house of worship, schools, government, corporate video, if you're gonna go NDI, if you're gonna go AV over IP, get a Netgear switch. And what I'll say too is when we talk about these Netgear switches, they will let you configure any of the individual connections to the presets, whether you're using full band with NDI that we talked about, whether you're using NDI HX2 or HX3, whether you're using Dante AVH, right, and yeah. they even have new switches that are supported with 502110. Yeah. I, so I, you, you really have anything that you need in an AVA over IP world, these Netgear switches have the right switch. Yeah, 2110 we're very excited about. I don't think it's ready for what I would call worship prime time yet. It's a little bit we, of a We talked about how a system with a KROS will, will draw you there. We'll absolutely. Draw. For yeah. the big budget churches. Absolutely. Did we get another question? Yeah, we have one more question come in. And I think we talked about this a little bit yesterday. So maybe going into this again. What are your thoughts on HDR? High dynamic range. So uh, if I can answer this one too. Basically, if you have a higher dynamic range camera, that means that if you have perhaps stained glass windows behind your subject with the higher dynamic range, they will not be um, you know, clipped as easily. Your highlights won't be lost as easily or your shadows as easily. So yeah, when you're starting to look at those higher end PTZs and camcorders, looking at whether how many stops of dynamic range they have is definitely something worth looking into. Yeah, 100%. If you put yourself in a time machine, you went back to 2015, 17, before uh, the epidemic, 4K and, and HDR was tied together in the UHD spec. Right. But what happened with the pandemic was a lot of that HDR stuff got dropped. But I used to give the best example. I'd say if you had two people back in 2016, 17 with two TVs, one was a 4K without high dynamic range. The other was an HD with high dynamic range. Most people would feel the HD high dynamic range was a sharper image because of the way our eyes pick up color and the fact that TV in itself is kind of an optical illusion of what we're seeing, how the motion all works. But I think HDR is going to be a really cool thing this coming year. We have cameras with HDR in it. Uh, NDI 6, will, which has been teased, is going to support HDR. And I think it's very, very cool. Our folks over at Atomos are working on some cool HDR stuff. You know, they always had it, but to bring that into streaming and other things. So HDR, I think, is really great. And especially if you've got a big, gorgeous, beautiful church with all the stained glass windows and all the architecture that's in the church, the carvings and the statues and everything and the mosaics, that stuff's going to pop a lot better with HDR. But marry it to 4K. 4K HDR. And if you're looking to do something like that, by all means, give us a call. We'll point it out. But you're going to want, for number one, that's those flagship type cameras. Yep. It's more of a TriCaster, you know, a more expensive TriCaster with HDR. But we're real excited about it. We think it's going to be the future coming. And like I said, I kind of got sad that it got dropped because to me, HDR looks better than 4K. When you do 4K and HDR, it looks a lot better. And I'll give you an example if I can one more time. If you go to sports. Yep. I used to be watching a football or a baseball game on DirecTV. It would say, do you want to watch the show in 4K? And I'd click over and I'd be like, this actually looks worse. Right. And one of the things that would happen is the color would shift in the wrong way too because it wasn't really – they were really taking an HD signal without HDR kind of, kind of faking it. Yep. Now when you hit that button, it pops and it looks gorgeous because it truly is 
UHD, which is 4K with HDR together. So yep. very cool. That's a great question, boy. That's someone I hope has a big budget because they have big aspirations and it's not going to be expensive <laughs> to get there. Excellent. Gary, thank you so much for joining us for the Q&A. Awesome. Great job, and thank you for hosting.